Alrighty, welcome everybody to uh, the HDI live stream. We are so excited to have you guys. I'm excited to be back, my second time hosting here today. So welcome back. Just a quick note here, we wanna let you know that we are sponsored by Robert Half Talent Solutions. Uh, Robert Half provides you with highly skilled IT professionals to help keep your business running. So check out the link here at the top of the screen. Um, you can find, uh, search and find great candidates for open roles, or if you happen to be the candidate, you can go online uh, and, and find roles that, that might fit your, your experience. So um, get out there, go visit Robert Half. Um, they're not only a talent repository, but they also share really cool information, um, information around how to retain the talent that you already have today, how to stand out throughout your onboarding process when you're bringing in new talent, and then they even have some salary guides to help you on either side of the hiring process, whether you're the employee um, or the employer. So go online. Thank you to Robert Half for, for sponsoring us today. And uh, we are super excited to get started with today's show. So with that, we are welcoming Rob, uh, Rocky here to, uh, to the live stream tonight. And Rocky, I'm going to quickly read your bio, um, but I'm really excited to get in, into our subject. So um, Rocky is the Strategic Alliance Manager at Drive Savers Data Recovery. He brings almost a decade of experience to storage and technology services industry. He preaches backup, 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 and knows how to help if you or your clients or end users have a data loss situation. Rocky recently graduated with his MBA from UC Davis Graduate School of Management. So, Rocky, welcome to the live stream. Hey, it's great to be back. Yes. Um, it, it, this is my second time on and it's always fun, so looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, we've got a really interesting topic to talk about today. I think this is probably top of mind for a lot of people, especially as we're just coming out of COVID and has a lot of people's wheels churning about what's next in their career and what are things that they can do to help jumpstart, whether they're looking to just take steps forward or looking to totally change up what they're doing. So um, tell us a little bit about what was what was your aha moment? What was the moment that made you say, maybe it's time to go back to school? So it was something I always wanted to do, but with those things that we kind of tuck away of things we want to do, they slowly start getting farther and farther away from actually doing them. Uh, it, it had been gosh, a decade or so after undergrad where I just said, you know what, if I don't do this now, I'm not going to do it. And so I started looking into it and the more I just saw experiences from those who went through a similar program, I said, hey, let's just, let's apply. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And that was the start of it. That's awesome. And I think, again, like this is something that most of us are thinking about or have thought about at some point. But you brought up a good point. For a lot of us, we've been out of school for a decade or more. So kind of how did you get over that fear of like, can I even go back to school? Like, what am I going to do to help prep myself to get? That's a very different frame of mind than the day to day job. That was one of my biggest fears was I was familiar with the course load. I've had friends who have gone back to school and got their master's or even just going back for another degree and I, I think the best way to prepare for it is really to get yourself in that mindset that I'm going to need to set some time out of my normal schedule. Maybe that's early in the morning or late at night, but as we all work full time, it's, yeah. it was, it was scary. I was like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> I've got Saturday and Sunday. That's 48 hours. Yeah. I do have to sleep somewhere there. But um, the best way to really prep yourself is just to be mentally ready to, to get in and, and get down to business, if you will, because it, it starts fast. There, there really, there's no real warm up period. It's all of a sudden, you want me to read this much and <laughs> by next week and write this paper? Yeah. Well, I mean, it is kind of like the real world, right? Like there's no way to prep once you, if, especially a lot of us who are at startups, who are just taking on new challenges. I mean, you kind of get thrown into the deep end and have to figure it out. So it is a, a good way to sort of warm you up to a, what a life in, in the business world could look like. Absolutely. It's, it, it adds to the hats that you can wear in the future. Um, and with anything, when you go through those types of challenges, they really prepare you to, if you had to put your HR hat on one day and then, you know, <laughs> of course, go back into the IT system side yeah. an hour later, right? You know, you, you can do it. That's awesome. So throughout your application process, and I know 
obvious from your bio that you ended up graduating from UC Davis. Did you know you wanted to go to Davis? What was your sort of plan and thinking about what was going to be the best fit for you? So I didn't think of UC Davis um, at first, and I was looking at a number of different programs. I had a good friend of mine um, go through Syracuse's uh, Whitman Mm -hmm. program, um, and my sister had seen something on Facebook and she messaged me and she's like, just apply, just, just see, what, just Gotta give it a siblings. <laughs> right. And so she's always been that driving force to get me moving. She knew I wanted to, to go, to go back to school. Yeah. But it, I said, sure. Why not? They're, they're, they have a webinar coming up. Let, let's, let's go ahead and let's, let's get our feet wet. Yeah. And I did it. And I, I'm in Petaluma, Sonoma County, so Davis isn't very far away. They're, they have a great program and a lot of in-person events and whatnot. Of course, COVID came, so that a lot changed, <laughs> but I figured, he, let's do it. I applied yeah. and my admissions counselor was great. I, and as soon as I got that acceptance letter, I, I, I it, it was surprising. It was a small letter. <laughs> Normally, if we all remember going back to way back when, you know, you get the small letter and you're thinking, oh, gosh, <laughs> probably didn't I'm accept me. Not a good and, sign. <laughs> and, right. And I had only applied to two. Um, I applied to Syracuse as well as uh, Davis's program. And I just figured, you know, let, let's keep it that and see what happens. Yeah. But nonetheless, I opened it up. I was accepted. Um, I then checked my email and I had, of course, a big PDF packet to read through. And that was the start, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I, Rocky and I were joking when we were chatting in like our, our, our pre-chat uh, yesterday that, you know, back when we were applying to undergrad the first time, everything came and like, they remember those big packets you used to get with the booklets and all the things and, you know, and you kind of date yourself when you get the letter and they're like, get online and, you know, go into the portal. And you're like, oh yeah, that's right. We're in 2022. There's probably a portal it, for, for it, everything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and as we both had laughed about yeah. the, the small letter usually meant so sorry to let you know that yeah. you have not been accepted. Yeah. Oh, so funny. Uh, but yeah, so you get into Davis, you're like, all right, we're going to do this. Did you talk to your employer about it? How did you think about sort of balancing the, because you, you have a full-time job. So balancing the workload that you had to manage today versus the school load that you were going to be adding on top of it. Absolutely. And that was the first thing I did before I really dug into the application process was to make sure that is this something that is doable? Yep. And of course, it does add some I guess, significant load to your <laughs> already full workload, if you will. Right. And I got to go ahead and, and they were they mentioned, you know, we're flexible with, you know, if you cause if you can let us know and advance that you have an event you need to go to, you know, you can take the time to go to it. And that, of course, I know people who did it under the radar, didn't <laughs> talk to their employer or anything like that, but yeah. it, it's a lot easier to have the conversation of, Hey, I need to take Thursday and Friday off because I need to head up to Davis for a four day event. Yeah. Um, and when they know you're in school, a lot easier to get the A-OK. -okay. <laughs> Well, hopefully, too, I would imagine a lot of employers look at it as, as a huge benefit, right? I know there are a ton of companies out there that sponsor going back to school because you're going to learn tricks and tips that are going to only add value to the role that you do or potentially another role within the organization. So um, exactly. I think having that sort of open communication can probably open some really interesting doors for you. Right. And, and it, as you mentioned, the stuff you're learning, you can apply yeah. readily, which is great. They're, they're just, it's almost as if you had a, a block of knives and you already have, they're, they're, they're great. You've had them for a long time. And let's say you're a chef, but going back to school really allows you to sharpen those said knives. I like and, that. You know, any chef would say that a sharp knife does a whole lot better than a dull <laughs> knife. So you're able to just do what you currently do yeah. a little bit better. And maybe instead of just thinking just outside of the box, you're thinking outside of the box, around the box, above the box, great, below yeah. the box and just, it, it brings a a very uh, you're just open to different ways of thinking and, yeah. and more aha moments at work that feel great. That's so awesome. Win win for everybody. We all love those feelings. I know that's like one of my favorite things. Is you know Ben and I will be sitting on zooms like this trying to figure stuff out, and when one of us does, it really is just like the best feeling in the world, and you just like just gives you that rush of adrenaline that uh, really makes the day worth it. 
Um, but so, okay, school is great. Work is great. You're balancing these two basically full-time jobs, but you also have to prioritize a personal life, right? Like we all, burnout is real and when you've got all this going on. So what was your motivation to sort of help get you through those moments when you were maybe feeling burnout or how did you balance having a personal life or that downtime along with everything else that you were trying to manage in the day? So I think for everybody, they're going to have a hobby they like to do. I like to fish. I like to golf. So those were what I called my study breaks. <laughs> and I'd even post on my Instagram story and, you know, I had a golf course study break, right? Yeah. And it's really good to have those, those windows of time to just turn off the brain, if you will, yeah. and do something you really want to do because you got to – you got to keep that mental energy as strong as possible. So during the work week with, with your job, school, that the tank kind of drains in the, in in the mental department, right? So you got to refill that. And even if it's putting, say, I'll read that chapter I need to read on Sunday because Saturday I'm, I'm taking that day. Um, and I would always have a day after, say I had my, I had a class Tuesday night and a class on Thursday night or excuse me, Wednesday night. And I would take Thursday night as my night off. I wouldn't touch the books unless something was desperately due. And I wouldn't think about school. I would just take it easy, Uh, maybe binge watch a show for an hour, (laughs) which might not be binge watching, but (laughs) during, during. Yeah. I don't know if you know what binge watching is. I have a very different definition of a, Spending an afternoon binge watching. <laughs> I will say the um, I do now. Yeah. I've, I've had so many seasons of shows that friends have told me about. I'm like, I don't have time for that. And <laughs> now I'm catching up. I have a I have a laundry list of shows I need to watch. So yeah, it's nice to have that. Yeah, and you kind of may have just answered that question a little bit, but but Amy asked a good question. Looking back, you know, kind of what what, what was the most challenging part of the last couple of years, and on the other side of that, what was the most rewarding? The cha- I would say the challenge was in the beginning, was getting into it. Okay. As I mentioned, you want me to read all of that and write a paper. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a lot at first, and yep. then you, you you kind of get used to it. Um, and I think the most rewarding part of that whole process, um, a little bit of this, this silver lining, if you will, for all of that work yep. is. Now I feel like I can do so much more with <laughs> within a small amount of time. Awesome. You know, nothing seems to be impossible. It's you know I just need to work a little harder, work a little smarter. Yep. Um, and a, a lot of the friendships that I made with classmates. I mean, as you can imagine, um, a lot of group work. Yeah. And, and being flexible. People have kids, families, personal lives, and you know the oftentimes, hey, Saturday night. Let's meet. Okay, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, and you know you're up till midnight or later working on a group project. And you, I've got a ton of folks that are just great friends now, yeah. just because we, we work together. And um, that's great. It, it, it's it's very rewarding. That's awesome. It, it's so great to hear, and this has all been so helpful. So, I'll ask one more question before we kind of get into closing here, but. Um, really good question about what tips and kind of were, there's a lot of people who are working from home as well as, you know, if they were going to add studying from home, what tips did you have to help sort of keep yourself productive? And did you have to do anything to sort of help shift gears from work brain to school brain? Kind of what did your day look like? Great question. So of course, when you're at work, you're at work. Yeah. When, when you're doing school, you're, you're doing school. I think you got to keep those two brains separately yep. to stay on point and focused. I would, after work, instead of getting right into the books, I would go to the gym. I would go for a run, go for a bike ride, just to kind of ease my mind. And then I would make a large pot of coffee and get to you <laughs> or yeah. doing some sort of data analysis project. But the... It, it's good to keep that separated and know that a, a, I question myself every once in a while. I was like, am I even doing this right? Yeah. Getting through the work is you learn as you go in regards to, because some stuff is, is at least for me, yeah. I, I was never the big math guy. Um, I found that I actually do enjoy statistics and, and whatnot, but 
taking the I can't or this is hard out of the vocabulary and just saying, I'm going to get through this the best I can yep. and I'm going to submit my work. And you'd be surprised at how good you can do with just getting the I can't out and just getting to it. Yeah. And that, uh, one, you just jogged my memory of something you and I talked about. Tell that quick story about the professor who, or it was a mentor or professor who sort of gave you some advice about how to approach school, not so much about grades, hey, but. Thanks for bringing that up. So when, when I got accepted, I, I was thinking to myself, you know what, I'm going to just get great grades. I want to try to be top of my class. Mm -hmm. And one of my professors had mentioned that as soon as in his experience getting his master's, he had mentioned that as soon as you take the grades out of it and you, you, you don't want to be top of the class or whatever you're trying to do, and you just want to learn the material, the grades will come. And unfortunately I had a, an oopsie moment on, on a, I, I, I didn't do so hot on <laughs> Happens Final to the best one. of us. <laughs> right. And, and so I got a B plus and it, one of my only Bs, if you will, but at least in grad school. Um, <laughs> it was humbling because I, at that point I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the whole top of the class or try to be in the top out of the picture. And again, take those words of wisdom and yeah. just, I want to learn and really focus on that and then the grades came after that it was it was very cool so you know i think anybody who's thinking about getting back into it focus on the learning and the good grades and things like that will come awesome well rocky thank you so much for for chatting with us today this was a really interesting conversation again i think really top of mind for a lot of people right now um so We've got Rocky's LinkedIn um, up on the screen. So if anyone wants to reach out, if they have questions, is LinkedIn the best way to get in touch with you? Absolutely. Shoot me a message. Um, and of course, I'm happy to talk to anybody about my experience. If they have any questions or, you know, if, from looking for schools to applications to even if they want to get into more depth of how did you make it happen? How did you manage your time? And again, I, I had a huge whiteboard um, that I <laughs> would awesome. put keeping track of due dates and whatnot, but please reach out. Happy to chat. Awesome. Rocky, thank you so much for the time today. We appreciate it. And uh, HDI team, thank you so much for all the behind the scenes work. We appreciate it. And we will see y'all next week. Bye.